Hi everyone, today I'm going to do installment 5.2 of our probability series which is talking about Venn diagrams. If you haven't watched my previous video on Venn diagrams, I suggest you first watch that one because this one is just more in-depth than the previous one that I did. All right, the numbers 1 to 12 are written on cards. Event A is picking an odd number and event B is picking a multiple of 3. So we have the numbers 1 to 12 written on a card. Event A is picking an odd number and event B is picking a multiple of 3. Represent the information in a Venn diagram. All right, so if we start with our sample space, our sample space are the values that we have on our cards, which are 1 to 12. Seven, eight, nine. I suggest that you write these out with me while I do it so that you can also do it yourself. All right, so we have our sample space, then we have event A and we have event B. So event A, remember with maths, curly brackets, semicolons to list our numbers, is picking an odd number. So we have the values 1 to 12. Those are the values that we have to choose from in our sample space. So our Odd numbers from 1 to 12 are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. And then event B is picking a multiple of 3. So the multiples of 3, remember the difference between factors and multiples. Multiples are 3, 6, 9, and 12 within the sample space. All right, now what you can notice is that there are going to be numbers that aren't being used. So this is when I would suggest that we just lightly cross out the values as we go. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to decide whether there's an intersection between these events. So event A and event B. Remember the sample space, the values 1 to 12 are going to go within my rectangle. But then is there an overlap? Is there an intersection? Is there something that these events have in common? And we can see very clearly that there's a 3 in both event, and event, event A and event B. And there's also a 9 in event A and in event B. So these circles are definitely going to overlap. So we start by drawing our rectangle. And then we have our circles. Now our circles are going to overlap. They are going to intersect. So we have our sample space. We label our one circle event A and we label our other circle event B. So whenever we have an intersection or we have an overlap in our values, what we're going to do is in our Venn diagram, we're going to start in the intersection. So we're going to start by placing the values 3 and 9 in my Venn diagram. Once I've placed it in my Venn diagram, I'm just going to cross it out of my events to make sure I'm listing everything. But then also I want to take it out of my sample space to make sure that I put everything in my sample space within the rectangle by the end of it. All right, so if we go to event A, event A, we are left with values 1, 5, 7 and 11. So we place 1, 5, 7 and 11 so that within my circle a can you see that within circle a or event a the three and the nine are still there because they're in the overlap so now i've got one i take one out of my sample space i take five out of my sample space seven and eleven out of my sample space Event B was a multiple of 3, so now I'm going to finish up event B's circle. Remember, 3 and 9 are already there because they were in the intersection. And now I have 6 and I have 12. So I'm going to put 6 and I'm going to put 12. Cross out 6 from my sample space, cross out 12 from my sample space. And now I've put everything from event A and event B into my two circles. Because I crossed it out of my sample space, can you see very clearly, we have a 2, a 4, an 8 and a 10 from my sample space that haven't fallen within my two circles. So I need to put them in my sample space 2, 4, 8 and 10 to complete my sample space. So now within my sample space I have all 12 of the numbers and it's represented within the circles event A and event B and in my sample space. Example number 2. Jessica asked 200 people whether they prefer KFC or McDonald's. All right, now this question, 
With the previous question, with numbers written 1 to 12, now we have actual values in our circle. So we have the value 1, we have the value 5. So this value, the one that I'm circling now of 5, represents the number 5 and not 5 actual values. Whereas with this question, now I'm going to be working with 200 people. So that's going to change it just a little bit. All right, so 72 people like KFC, 110 people like McDonald's, and 40 people like both KFC and McDonald's. So when I'm looking and I'm reading my question, I'm going to start by noticing that it says that there are 40 people that like both KFC and McDonald's. It says represent this information in a Venn diagram. All right, so now I'm not going to list my sample space because my sample space consists of 200 people. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my Venn diagram. So I always start with my rectangle for my sample space. Now, within the sample space, I need to have 200 people within the sample space. There are two events. Event one is KFC and event two is McDonald's. Liking KFC, liking McDonald's. So I need to identify... Is there an overlap? Is there an intersection between these two? And yes, there is. 40 people like both KFC and McDonald's, which means that when I draw my circle, I'm going to have a K for KFC and an M for McDonald's. All right, so I have two events, KFC and McDonald's, but I have an intersection. I have an overlap between them because there are 40 people that like both KFC and McDonald's. So that 40 those 40 people go in the intersection. All right, now there were 200 people in total, so I put the 200 people in my sample space, all right? And then KFC, there were 72 people that like KFC and 110 that like McDonald's. So I'm just going to put those in little uh, brackets there by the KFC and McDonald's so that I ensure that my circle, when I'm done, the circle of KFC needs to have 72 people in it, and the circle of McDonald's has to have 110 people in it. Now, if I did 72 plus 110 plus 40, I'm going to get to 222 people. Now, obviously, that's not the correct number of people because we only need 200 people, which means that now I need to work with these figures to make my circles balance. So now, the people that like KFC are 72. There's 72 people that like KFC. But if I look at my KFC circle that I've drawn pretty dramatically in there, there's 72 people, but 40 people are already in that circle. So there are already 40 people that are in my KFC circle. But I need 72 people in total. So that means that... I'm going to have 72 people that like KFC minus the 40 people that are already there. So I have 32 people left in my circle because now when I add the 32 and the 40, I'm going to get my original 72 people that like KFC. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing over here. And in my McDonald's circle, I can see that there are already 40 people in my McDonald's circle. There need to be 110 people in total. So what's missing? I'm going to say 110 people like the McDonald's, but there are already 40 people in the intersection because just because they like KFC doesn't mean that they don't like McDonald's because they like KFC and McDonald's. So 110 minus my 40 that are already in that circle give me 70 people. So now if I were to just read this a little bit differently, right? If I were to focus on how to read this, if I were to look at these 32 people that I've now highlighted in red, those 30, 32 people like KFC only because now those 32 people have nothing to do with the McDonald's circle. Also, the 70 people in the McDonald's circle that aren't in the intersection like only McDonald's and not KFC because they're not in the intersection. Okay, so that's how we would talk about it. So we'd say 32 people like KFC only, 70 people like McDonald's only. 40 people like KFC and McDonald's. But when I include the 40 people that like both fast food joints, then we have 72 that like KFC and 110 in total that like McDonald's. But now, if I were to add 32 plus the 40 that like them both, plus the 70 that like just McDonald's, I'm going to get an answer of 142. Now, if I talk about 142 people 
that's not the 200 people that were originally asked, which means that there is something different between the original 200 people that were asked and the 142 people that are currently represented in my Venn diagram, which means that I need to say 200 minus the 142, and that gives me 58 people. So these 58 people were not accounted for yet currently within those two circles, which means that there are 58 people in the sample space that don't like either McDonald's or KFC. All right. The question says, what is the, I'm looking at question B, what is the probability of picking a person at random who liked both KFC and McDonald's? So the probability of picking a person that likes KFC and McDonald's. So it's both KFC and McDonald's. So KFC and McDonald's, you'll see that's the intersection. That's the overlap. So that's 40 people like KFC and McDonald's probability, the favorable outcomes over the total outcomes. So how many total outcomes do I have? 200. And when I simplify that down, I get a probability of one over five that someone picked at random would like both KFC and McDonald's. Question C says, what is the probability of picking a person at random who doesn't like either fast food? All right, so it doesn't like either fast food. So that would be the probability that they don't like either fast food. So we could do our notation of either fast food. And that would be the 58 people that don't like either over the 200 people in total, which gives us 29 over 100 as a simplified fraction. All right. Now, when we are talking about um, the next question, it says, what is the probability that a person picked at random does not like KFC? Now, there are two different ways in which we could write out the answer to this question. All right. So the probability that someone does not like KFC would be equal to, well, who doesn't like KFC? These people all within the KFC circle. Can you see this KFC circle? Those are the people that like KFC. So we can very clearly see who doesn't like KFC. So we know who doesn't like KFC. It's these 70 people that like McDonald's only, and it's the 58 people that don't like either fast food. So we know that 70 people that only like McDonald's plus the 58 people that like both, that like neither, I mean, out of the 200 people in total, which would give us 128 over 200, which simplifies down to 16 over 25. There is, however, an alternative. An alternative method, right? Because the probability of not liking KFC would be equal to 1 minus the probability of liking KFC. So that would be 1 minus how many people like KFC? 72 people like KFC out of the 200 people in total, which gives us an answer of 16 over 25. So you can see that both of these answers result in the same. Both of these equations aren't result in the same answer. All right. There are 100 people that participate in a fitness survey. So we have 100 people. So that's important to note. 18 people in the survey run. 10 people run and do a core workout. And 56 do neither. Represent this in a Venn diagram. All right, so we start with our rectangle. This is our sample space. Our sample space will be the 100 people that were um, that participated in the survey. All right, now if we have 100 people that participated in the survey, we have people that are running and people that are doing core workouts. So it says 10 people run 
and do a core workout. So we always have to look for the and, we have to look for the intersection first, which means that these two circles do intersect. There is something that they have in common. So we have a running event and we have a core workout event. All right, so we're going to start in the intersection. Whenever we have an intersection, that's where we're starting. So we know that 10 people do both. We can also go straight into the 56 that do neither. So the 56 people would go on this side. And then it says that 18 people run. Okay. Now, if I were to put 18 over here, then that means that within the running circle, there would actually be 28 people. So that means that I can't put the 18 there. So if there are 18 people who run, 18 people took the survey that run, okay, there are already 10 people within the running circle because here's my running circle and there are 10 people in there already, which means how many people are left to add into the running circle? There are eight. Now, I've done the 18 people that run, I've done the 10 people that do both, and I've done the 56 people that do neither. And as you can see, we are short on something. We're short on the value that goes in the core workout only. So there's an easy way to get that value. We know that the, number of, the total number of people that did the survey is 100. And that's why it's really helpful to, to list the the sample space at the top. So we know that 100 people did the workout, I mean the survey. So we already have eight people here, another 10 people and 56 people. So we can say that this is X, right? Because we don't know what it is. So we know that eight people plus the 10 people that do both plus X, that's what I don't know, plus 56 people that do neither need to total my full sample space of 100. So I can then do a simple equation, take everything to the other side. So I know that x therefore equals 26. So I can therefore say that 26 people go, do the core workout only. So if I were, if the question were to ask me how many people do a core workout together in total, then I'd have 36 people do it in total. Brian asks 160 people whether they prefer to drink Coke or Pepsi. His results are shown below. All right, so if we're talking about Coke or Pepsi here, we have 160 people that were asked about their preference. The question now says, how many people like both drinks? So how many people like both drinks? We can see that that's our X. That's our intersection. How many like both drinks? All right, so that's very easy. What are we going to do? We're going to say the 33 people that like Coke only, plus the X number of people that like both drinks, plus the 65 people that like Pepsi, Plus, don't forget the 22 people in the sample space. We have to remember to add the 22 people in the sample space. And that will give us our total of 160 people. All right, when I add 33, 65, and 22, I get 120. So x plus 120 is equal to 160. So therefore, how many people like only, I mean, like both of them, how many people in the intersection? 14.